Being an effective leader is hard work. You know what's harder? Being an effective female leader of an organization that teaches leadership. Let's talk about it. Welcome to the RK3 Show. I'm Robert Kennedy III, RK3, that's me, and today is an amazing day, and we're in for an amazing show today. People say to me, Robert, dude, why are you always so happy? You know what I say? I say, well, the opposite is unhappy, and I don't like that. (laughs) Okay, I know life isn't easy, and, and there are some circumstances that challenge people and make them unhappy, but I'm here to tell you today that you don't have to stay there. Choose, make the choice, choose the opposite of unhappy. Then go listen to some Bobby McFerrin or Pharrell, because I'm ha- that's all I can legally sing without getting in trouble. <laughs> hey, I hope we're providing you with some amazing value on the show, and I want to hear about it. Shoot me a message by going to robertkennedy3.com forward slash voicemail. That's robertkennedy3.com forward slash voicemail. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear what you have to say. I want to hear some hellos. Speaking of value, I want to invite you to go back to visit some of the previous episodes where there are value bombs, like episode 35, where I talk about how giving helps your business. Or episode 32, where Coach Kendall Ficklin shares how to craft an amazing and influential story. Or episode 30, where I talk about dealing with imposter syndrome. Wow, I guarantee you there's goodness in those episodes. So go check them out and be sure to listen and share with a friend. Okay, let's go. My guest today is Jennifer McCullum. Jennifer is the CEO of Linkage, a leadership organization where she oversees the strategic direction and the global operations of this Burlington, Massachusetts based company. She's got 20 years of experience building, leading businesses in the leadership space with a focus on leadership development, assessment and analytics. Jennifer's got a story. Let's tell it. Jennifer McCullum, how are you doing today? Robert, thank you so much for having me on your show. It is a fantastic Monday. Love it. Love it. Not everybody can say that or not everybody chooses to say that. So I appreciate you embracing the Monday. (laughs) Listen, I know you said you just came back from vacation. How was that for you? It was good. That nice 4th of July, little family, little downtime. Feels like we're gearing up for the back half of the year now. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. We say this every year, but we can't believe that we're already finished with the first half of the year. Wow. I know. We got a lot of work to do. Yeah, we do. So let's jump right in. I I mentioned in the intro here that you are a a CEO, an executive for Linkage, a leadership organization. And if I'm correct, you are the first female leader or female CEO for this organization. What what would you say is the greatest challenge that comes with that? That is correct. I am the first female CEO of Linkage, although Linkage has been around for 30 years. And it really is part of our mission to change the face of leadership. And one of the ways we're doing that is to support the advancement of women leaders. So your question is a really good one, which is, you know, what are my challenges as a female CEO? And it's really no different than the challenges that many females face as they're ascending in their organizations. And the first challenge is that there aren't a whole lot of us up there. So even though we enter the workplace, the workforce at the same rates, by the time we get to middle managers and directors, only a third are women. Then when you get to the senior leadership levels of VPs and above, it's only a quarter that are women. Um, And then when you get to the executive suites, it's less than 20% and Fortune 500 CEOs are only 24 women total. Wow. Just a lack. It's, It's lonely. There's a lack of mentors, a lack of role models who are women. 
Um, but the other thing that's challenging is just like many of my peers, um, we women do face unique hurdles as we ascend in our leadership. And we have studied this, that women face what we call the seven hurdles that can impede our own progress to advancement. And um, I can give you an example of one of those if you're interested. Oh, yeah. well, that's where we're here. Let's rock. <laughs> so the hurdles, which, again, are mostly internal, um, could include things like our own internal biases. So we as women are more likely to think along the lines of, am I good enough for that role or that promotion? Am I? really ready. Men feel ready faster than women, at least internally in their own head, even if we're equally qualified. Um, I've got three kids. So the things that play in my head are, am I able to be there for my children while having this incredibly challenging job? So those are some of the things that play in terms of my own internal bias. Other things are a little bit more obvious, like um, a woman's need to prove their own value. So we may, what we call over row the boat and volunteer more and more to prove ourselves until we're exhausted. Um, Things like confidence, negotiation, making, being able to to make the ask, um, whether it comes to salary or flexibility. Women struggle in a different way than men do. We've proven that out across the last 20 years or so that we've been studying this. So I I face those similar challenges. Wow. So as the female leader, as the CEO of your organization, you no doubt have other women that are in the organization that may be aspiring to leadership themselves someday. And you've just notated some challenges. How do you as a leader equip them and help them to navigate those? So maybe they don't have the same road or the same barriers that you do. That's exactly right. And there are, uh, there are several things that, that I can do in my organization, but there are several things that all leadership teams and leaders can do in their organizations to support women. And the first is that individual level. So there's individual development that can support women and even becoming aware of their own inner hurdles and then supporting their own development, whether it's coaching or training. We run an institute called the Women in Leadership Institute mm-hmm. where they start to really develop themselves. But, you know, that's only half of the battle. The other half this is where most organizations fall down is that they have to ensure they're creating that organizational surround, that support in terms of the right culture, uh, the right executive commitment and executive action. So women need to look up and see executives saying, this is an issue that's important to me and we are going to support you through things like sponsorship and mentorship. Um, And then the third thing is talent systems. Is there equity in talent systems in terms of identifying women that can, that are ready for promotion? Um, Equal pay is another thing. Wow. So I am smack dab in the middle of leadership communication in some of my work with, with organizations as a, a leader, are there communication tools that you have to employ differently? Are there ways that you have to communicate differently as a woman CEO that are, that are different from how a male CEO might have to communicate? Well, this is interesting. I, I think in terms of what makes a good leader, mm-hmm. I think that is really gender agnostic. And I do want to hit on this because when it comes to men and women, it's not about communicating differently or fixing women or any other underrepresented group. It's about what makes an effective leader. And if I could just pause for one moment, we've actually done a whole lot of of research on this as well across the last 30 years. We studied 100,000 leaders uh, through multi-rater feedback and also through um, correlating their financial outcomes back to the leaders themselves. And here's what we know. It is critical for leaders to connect their individual purpose with the broader organizational goals or even the team or division goals and outcomes. They have to have that personal connection. But, and I'm getting back to your communication question, they also have to fulfill what we call the five commitments of leadership. And this is what our stakeholders, our followers expect of us. And one of those things, and this gets to communication, is inspire. Another is engage. So the communication that we're using to inspire and engage our stakeholders becomes exceptionally critical to effective leadership. There are other things like innovate and achieve, 
which Achieve is about hitting the numbers uh, and, and organizing and structuring your team. But when it comes to that communication, are we inspiring and are we engaging every single person, uh, whether it's a woman or a man? That's just good leadership. Communication, motivation, leadership, and more. You're listening to the RK3 Show. Hey, are you interested in becoming a paid public speaker? Is that you? Well, jump into the show notes to download my free booklet, 15 Ways to Grab Speaking Gigs Now. You've got a story to tell, and you should be paid for it. So why not start right now? Go over to the show notes and grab your free download, or you can go to speakrightnow.com forward slash 15 ways. That's speakrightnow.com, W-R-I-T-E, speakrightnow.com forward slash 15 ways. And now, back to the show. You've hit on some of the traits of effective leadership. And one of the things that sits inside of leadership, John Maxwell refers to leadership as influence, nothing more, nothing less. What are some of the things that you encourage your leaders to do in order to truly be not just effective, but influential? So one of the things um, that creates influence is how we actually, and, and this is a leadership imperative, How are you actually shaping the culture of an organization in terms of how things are getting done? What is that culture that you're trying to create? Um, And if you want to influence all the way down, every single person needs to be touched through through that culture. So the other is around that inspire piece. So if you really want to influence, you have to inspire people with the vision, inspire people with the goals. And make sure that they own a piece of it. They feel connected to it and they feel included. And that's that engage piece as well. And then I think the third thing I would say related to influence is you've got to develop and mentor and sponsor them. You've got to spend time with them. Um, They want attention and they want to feel like you as the leader really care about them at the individual level. Right. So we've been talking quite a bit about you as a female or woman leader, but you've also done a lot of work with regard to inclusion as, as a whole in leadership. Tell me a little bit about some of what you've been doing and something, maybe what's really important for you inside of all of that. Yeah, this is actually some of our, our latest research that just has come out this year is around what is the role of inclusion in terms of leadership effectiveness. So studying all those leaders over years and years, we knew and we built into some of the questions that we ask in our multi-rater feedback. Um, And I'll give you an example of one. How well does this leader encourage a culture where people can speak up regardless of their experience or regardless of their background? So that's an example of what I would call an inclusion question. And we wove uh, 12 or 14 questions throughout our our multi-rater and then studied those standalone. And what we just discovered is that when you take all of the requirements of effective leadership, I talked about inspire, I talked about engage, I talked about innovate, I talked about achieve, and you only study those 14 items around inclusion, those standalone predict leadership effectiveness greater than every single one of those individual pieces, uh, which leads us to believe that inclusive leaders um, are effective leaders. And we know that effective leaders are purposeful leaders that operate against those five commitments. But the role of inclusion is becoming more and more evident in our, um, in our data and in our practice. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure that you've, you, you've looked through a lot of data, a lot of information, and you've done a lot of study on leaders as a whole. Are there any leaders that stand out or really inspire you in your leadership? There are, there are several. And I actually, I, you know, obviously I'm looking at women leaders as well. And yeah. um, from Michelle Obama to Ruth Bader Ginsburg to the, the current CEO of GM, um, these are these are leaders that are um, not only inclusive leaders, but they are really operating across those five commitments. They are inspiring us. They're engaging us. They're showing us what inclusion truly looks like. Um, so Mary Barra, who's the, the current CEO of GM, 
is um, it is the, the number one company that has a the the only company that has a gender pay equity gap of less than three percent. Wow! We hired a woman CFO. It's one of the only CEO CFO female pairings, um, and it's a it's a majority female board, which is very rare in the Fortune right. five. So we look to leaders like that who are demonstrating not only inclusion, but all of the five commitments that we call purposeful leadership. Awesome. Awesome. So for people who are aspiring, who are ready to move into the next phase of of leadership or to take on that leadership mantle, are there any resources that you would recommend that you tell people to read to really get themselves equipped for that journey? So, well, I, I would be remiss if I didn't promote our own books for, so we'll, we'll start here. <laughs> so there's a, a, a book that we released this time last year. And this is, this is not only specifically for women, but also men who are in a position of advancing women. And that is called Mastering Your Inner Critic and Seven Other High Hurdles to Advancement. So that wow. those relate not only to getting deep in terms of what is the hurdle, but it gives lots of examples of very successful female executives and how they overcame those hurdles throughout their career. So that's one. And we have a new book coming out in a couple months called Become the Path to Purposeful Leadership. So that gets underneath the five commitments to leadership. And again, a lot of stories and examples of how leaders and companies have, um, have really demonstrated and executed on those commitments. So reading is one thing. Um, We also encourage um, individual development. So if you are in a position for whether it's um, assessments to really understand and become a lot more self-aware. For example, I didn't really know that um, what I, what I call proving my value was a hurdle of mine until I took the assessment and realized I'm actually at 50 years old, having worked for 25 years in this industry, I'm still struggling with that one. And how can I overcome that now is with a really good circle of advisors, um, as well as a coach and my own development. That is excellent. I can tell that you're comfortable inside of that because you just blurted out your age and didn't say, didn't blink. <laughs> two weeks, man. I got two, I got two weeks before I turn 50. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, Jennifer, this has been a, an absolute pleasure. Where can people find out more about you and the work you do, your organization? So please go to our website, www.linkageinc.com. You can also feel free to reach out to me, Jennifer McCollum, CEO of Linkage Inc. on LinkedIn. And I would love to further this conversation. Thank you, Jennifer. I hope you'll go check out Jennifer and Linkage when you have a moment. They say that leadership is lonely, and it is because I experience it all the time. But it's probably harder when the odds are stacked against you because of your race, your gender, your language or anything which may distinguish you from the crew who's normally in charge. Well, today's show was recorded to help you understand that you are someone special. No matter what you feel, lonely, ill-equipped, nervous, not ready, you already have what it takes to make it. And guess what? Maybe the reason you need to keep going is because somebody else who is meant to do something great can only do it because they saw you keep going in spite of the obstacles. So don't quit. You were made for this. That's all, folks. Head to the show notes to grab the links and resources from this episode. Then go over to Apple Podcasts to leave a ranking, rating, and review for the show. Also, head over to the other major podcast outlets. Stitcher, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. I hope you had fun today and I hope you learned something. Most of all, I hope you were compelled to come out of your comfort zone and share your story. Don't forget, everything that happens to you in life is your stuff. Your stuff is your story and your story deserves a stage. I'm Robert Kennedy III, RK3, and you've been listening to... The R-